So let's talk about your boys real quick. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry, LSU twenty seven, Texas A and M twenty four. A and M's post game win expectancy was fifty eight percent. So I, what I want to know, well, first off, Orgeron did say after the ball game he is not going to coach in the bowl game. So that was his final well, that game. Was- as that the, was agreed upon way before yeah, I think then. It, I think that, that was, was that was part yeah. of the terms of the agreement. They knew they would have a new head coach involved if they made it to a bowl game. He was not going to be in the office while the new head coach was going to be in the office. This was all part of the plan. Yes. That's um, nothing new. That didn't just happen. The day they negotiated the buyout, this was how the buyout was going to work. All right, so I, I had this game on a separate screen. Uh, obviously, it was going on during Bedlam and all that. And I was watching, and I did not hear what they what their reasoning was for this. The, the play that everybody's talking about is the punt return strip at the end of the game that that led to the drive that actually won the uh, the ball game. Yeah, what what happened there? Because I, I I saw it, and and the more that you see the replays and whatnot, it looked like a clean strip. Like there was, yeah. and and there was a penalty on the play. But I didn't think that the penalty would negate a turnover. So I'm, what what well, yeah, happened no, no, in this? No, no, the penalty did negate the turnover. That's but that's what happened. I think the penalty negated the turnover. Okay, so that that's all it was. It was because I it was just it was just yeah. I mean, the, I couldn't get to my strip, remote to turn it up. It, it it doesn't matter what happened in the play if you've got if you've got the penalty. Yeah, that's that would make sense. That would make sense. A everything lot of people everything were, that happens after the penalty is moot. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, so, so it did lead to uh, a long drive for LSU. They were down twenty four to twenty at this point. Yes, and uh, and in just incredibly impressive drive because LSU had really been able to do nothing on offense. You talked early in this game about LSU finally figured out that you can use the R in RPO. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, Gary! Oh my god! So one of the reasons, not just one of. I think the sole reason Max Johnson was the starting quarterback for LSU this year, he won the job, was because of his mobility, his ability to run the football. And they were going to build an offense around RPOs using Max and our running backs because we knew we didn't have a great offensive line, so we had to kind of trick it, you know, gimmick the the, the run game, okay? Yeah. And if you saw LSU early in the season, you know they, they literally had single-digit rushing yards. Like, it was just bad. All right? Could not run the football. In this game, and at, oh no, all season, they ran all these RPOs. I'm telling you, I've watched every snap of this bad football team all year. Not one time did they run the football from the RPO. So after about game five, every defense in the country knows just play that like it's a uh, play action. Don't give up on the pass. Only cover the pass. If it looks like it's an RPO, play it as a standard pass game until they run the football on us. And all year, teams have shut it down like they knew the play. The, it, the whole purpose of doing RPO is to give the run pass option. But when they know you're going to pass the ball, it, it's no longer, <laughs> you've no lost the trick. gimmick. Yeah. You've lost the trick. <laughs> this game, the first drive, the very first time all year, all year, they ran the football on the RPO. They ran it like three times in the first two drives. And I thought, Holy shit. <laughs> Maybe they knew this was going to be a bad year. Maybe they knew it yeah. was going to be a bad season. And they just sandbagged it the whole season just yes. to just to win the pacemaker game. Just to beat pacemaker just game. to beat oh this God. AM team. <laughs> I had a feeling that they were going to come out fired up, and they did. They were leading 17 to 7 at the half. But yeah. obviously, you knew that the, the pregame speech from Coach O was going to be bananas, and it was going to be yep. – everybody was going to be fired up because as as wrong as things have gone the last two seasons, they still love the man. That Those kids yep. still fight for him. You have seen it Every over Every player and worships over. him. Yes. Every player worships – even kids that have transferred out talk about their love – for oh, Coach o. O. they just they just went other places to 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 play and do other things. Well, because they they've probably felt like they could be better developed elsewhere, right? Because when you are rotating yes. assistant coaches the way that they have been, it's it's hard to be able to be developed. Like it, it's tough because when you got new schemes coming in all the time, you don't know how you're going to fit, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So it's 
It, it, it was a little tough, but in this ball game, LSU 412 total yards, 296 for A&M. A&M got things rolling in the second half, and, and they had a lead, and the last drive was was perfect. Just absolutely perfect for LSU. It was nine plays, 85 yards in a minute 38, and they scored with 20 seconds left to win the ball game. Perfect pass into the end zone from Max Johnson, who who has not made a ton of great throws lately, but had a bunch of them in this right. game, it looked like. This was, I was very excited for you. Uh, because not, not because you're getting to go to a bowl game or anything like that, but I think it's better for Coach O to go out a winner. Yes. And... And yes. it just makes he everything so much easier, right? This is this is how I wanted this thing to end because I need it to make sure that he's always welcome back and he always feels welcome back. And he said, and I watched every second of his press conference last night afterwards. I watched. He was so excited in the, 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 the post game. I, I watched, yeah, he he. This is a man that understood what happened, and and he. This is a guy that understands. Says he's got a lot of flaws, but he understands personal accountability and priority the day that he was going to get fired and he walked into Woodward's office. He told him, he says this in the press conference. I knew it was coming because I know the standards at LSU and I know what I've done. Like, like this is me screwing up and then knowing will you let me finish this season because I love this place. And it, it meant so much. It really did mean a lot to, to see him go out like that. The smile on his face to know it wasn't a sad thing. It was just, an, it, you know, one of I, people who followed the show for a long time, cause I hadn't broke these references out in a while. Know that I, I love, I love Harry Potter, love Harry Potter. <laughs> one of, one of the greatest lines of Harry Potter is Dumbledore talking about at the end, you know, he, him and Harry, Harry being upset that it's over, that it's ending. And, and he talks about how important the ending is to a story and how it, it has to end. The ending is a part of the story, and you can't have a great story if you don't have a good ending. I'll, I'll transition that to a different story. On the plane, I watched No Country for Old Men for the first time in my life. Thought, this is a great movie. I'm supposed to have seen this movie. I hadn't seen it yet. It, one of the shittiest endings of all time, because like, it had no ending at all. <laughs> Why do people love this movie? It was a great movie until the end, and it was just weird and stupid and a terrible ending because it was no ending. The ending is a part of the story, and it was a great ending for a great ride. O's issue, he had, he's always been the underdog. He's never been the, the star, the guy ever in his life. We had 2019, and after 2019, he became the greatest rock star in the history of the city of New Orleans, the state of New Orleans, ever, ever. And he really enjoyed for a year and a half of being a rock star. Yeah. And he went through a divorce and he started, you know, doing doing the things that rock stars do. Yeah, he had a personal life outside of the football facility and, and it he, was and uh, he, it was and he stopped and he stopped and I'm not saying he stopped ever caring about football, but it stopped being a priority. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's how he lost so, the game. And 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 then you lose your job because of that. And that's okay. That's okay. The fact that he didn't go out with piss and vinegar and burn bridges, we will always be able to bring back that 2019. Five years from now, 10 years from now, we're going to bring back that 2019. We're going to have Joe and 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 Justin Jefferson and, and Jamar Chase and Clyde and Ed and all, and all those, those offensive great linemen players. And yes. All those linemen. Yes, all the – God, that was a great line. Whew, I missed that. <laughs> all those defensive guys, we're going to have them all come back. And they're going to wave to the crowd, and we're going to remember that time. And it has to be a part of that. He, it, it can't happen without him. Agreed. And that's why I needed this ending. I didn't think we were going to get the win because I thought a and a real good team. I, I'm with you. They played the game, started off with their buttholes on fire, and they were going to – They were, but at some point in time, adrenaline loses, and the better team kind of takes over. That's what happened, and it, it was an unbelievable play an unbelievable catch by one of the most unforeseen heroes in LSU. This is a kid that did everything right, worked really hard to get here, wasn't offered by a lot of folks. His mom passed away in the middle of his recruiting, and it, it just just kind of became the fabric of, of the team and, and earned his way into a captain's role. O talked about how special like, you know, it was, and, and it was just 
it, it, it was special that it went to him. It was all kind of magical, you know? Yeah. Uh, there was a fourth down in this that Max Johnson had to complete. Yep. Fourth and six, I want to say it was. Uh, pass up the middle for 11 yards to uh, Jack Beck. And that kind of started the whole thing. Because once they converted that fourth down, there was a 31-yard pass and then an 11-yard pass after that. I mean, it was just, it, it was awesome. It was awesome. So, and then, of course, the 28-yard touchdown pass. That was great. Zach Calzada afterwards shared an Instagram story that said, all y'all can S my D. <laughs> Talking about all the A&M fans that were trashing him afterwards. A&M, I can understand the frustration. But mm-hmm. Zach Calzada did some pretty good things, and he developed very quickly. Remember, he he was not supposed to be your starting quarterback. He was and, not supposed to be the guy. No, and this was not a loss on him. This nope. was... That defense could not stop LSU's offense. That's Final right. Way. So, it, do it, you do you think do you think uh, too much head coaching buzz was going around that defensive uh, side of the field? Possibly because there's also talk about Elko leaving and everything else. It, it, that's what, that that's stuff, what I'm getting at. That stuff does get into the players' heads a little bit, but also I mean, think it gets that, into the coaches' heads too. I mean, it's really hard to yeah focus when you when you've got dollar signs getting thrown at you and job opportunities getting thrown at you. You can't ignore them. Like these are still people, right? Right. Like it. That's a really hard thing to ask someone to do. Yes. It. It's. It was really. It was really strange to see. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B G and any at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.